so in a previous video, I taught her watch me without uh, any hand cues. Ready? Can you find it? Watch me. Yes. Find it. 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 All right, so now I'm going to hold the broom. Watch me. Yes. Good girl. Thank you. Can I move it? Still looking at me, yes. So I don't have to cue her if she's already looking at me. Yes, good girl. So she looked at the broom, looked at me on her own. So now, put those in there where I can easily ask them. Yes, good girl. So because I warmed up with that game, she's already offering a lot of eye contact. Yes, good girl, because she's like, oh, well that's what we were just doing. Maybe I will still get treats. And I'm just gonna sweep a couple inches at a time. Yes, I know the sun got in your eyeballs. Here you go. Ready? Yes, good girl. That's very good. Let's see, can I sweep a little more? So if at any point she was getting distracted, I would pause. I would hold this still and I would ask her to watch me. If I needed, I would ask for a touch. But right now, yes, good girl. She's kind of latched on to this game of that's what we're doing for treats. That's good. Yes, thank you. Now eventually I might even combine this with a mat cue. Yes, if I was sure that it wasn't too exciting for me to be sweeping and it wasn't stressful for her, I could ask her to stay on a mat while I swept um, and then I could release her from the mat and put her in a new place where I needed to sweep elsewhere. And that's helpful for dogs who need a little more help ignoring it, um, but aren't afraid of it. They're just so excited. So you can really um, get them to glue themselves to the mat. Good job, very nice, very nice. And over time you can sweep more and more without needing a treat for it. Girl. So she got a little bit excited, and I'm not sure if it's because I bent over to get the treat that I dropped or if it was just too many sweeps. Oh, that is exciting, isn't it? Thank you for backing off. Can I sweep a little? Yes, good girl. If she hadn't backed off that quickly on her own, I probably would have done a touch. Yes, good girl, to get her further away before starting again. You may find it. I know it bends out of my hand, huh? But since she's refocusing when she does get excited, she's backing off as soon as I freeze it. Then, oh. Thank you. I didn't want to sweep you in the head. That wouldn't be nice, would it? Good job. Very nice. Good job. How are we doing? That's nice. Good job. So again, for now, it's okay if she's following me around. Um, you would use a pretty similar technique to do this with a vacuum. I would start with just putting the vacuum in the room. Mm. Hi. Um, and practicing some watch me while I walked around a bit. Can we all? And then without plugging in the vacuum, I would work on vacuuming the room by pushing it around the room just to get her mm. used to the tipping of it and the pushing of it. And depending on how excited the dog is or how nervous about it, I might start with just tipping the vacuum up and down. Same thing with a broom. I might work on just tipping it like this to make sure the dog's okay with that before I add any movement. Separate, hi. <laughs> Separately from that, I would work on the sound of the vacuum. So if you have a dog who's very noise sensitive, I may actually record the vacuum sound on my phone and then play that on the speaker at the loudest volume possible. Hit play and have uh, click the sound up one um, click at a time until the dog goes, do I hear something? Nah, and at that point I would give like a bully stick or a Kong or something like that to help the dog associate the sound predicting something good and just let them relax and then maybe gradually click up the volume as it goes. But I never want the dog going, no wait, I really did hear something, I swear. I just want them to do no, no, I didn't hear anything. I'm just imagining. I want them to be at that level of alertness where they notice it and then they kind of forget about it. Um, and if they're okay with that, then I would start with having the vacuum on in another room. This is a two-person job because you have someone turn on the vacuum and then whoever's with the puppy can either play with them. I usually do treats instead because I actually want it to be calm instead of playing. Hey, no box, come here. Don't eat the grass. Thank you. Um, and I would just slowly feed treats for about five to ten seconds and then have the person turn off the vacuum and gradually increase how long the vacuum can be on to get them used to the sound. No, but come here. Come here. Don't need to grab. And then, um, and then over time, you can increase the amount of uh, time in between treats. And no, but touch. Good girl. And then move the vacuum into a closer room until finally the dog can be next to the vacuum. And if they're fine with the vacuum being not literally next to them, but within the same room, um, if they're okay with that, then I start over by combining it, where I turn the vacuum on and I start moving it. And again, use treats as needed. If the dog is pretty calm like she was with the sweeping, you don't need to give very many treats 
And again, it may be, hey, I'm going to turn on the vacuum. You see me turn on the vacuum. Here's your bully stick. Go enjoy it over there so that they start learning to relax and stay out of the way when you vacuum so you don't have to worry about running over your puppy. 